This problem is going to look at a basic problem dealing with electric flux. Again, electric flux is the amount of electric field passing through a certain area. The equation for electric flux is the electric field dotted with the area vector, E dot A. In this problem we have a circular area and the area vector is perpendicular to the plane of the circle. And we're told that this loop is rotated so that the maximum electric flux is found. That means that the electric field is perpendicular to the plane of the circle, or the electric field is parallel to the area vector. And the area vector is perpendicular to the plane of the circle, and so the electric field is parallel to the area vector or perpendicular to the plane of the circle to get the maximum flux through that circle. So we're told that the flux, when it's in this position, is 2.92 times 10 to the fifth Newton meter squared per coulomb. And so that electric flux equals the electric field times the area of the circle, since we have it in this position where E is parallel to A, so E dot A becomes E times A. The area that we're looking at is the cross-sectional area of this circle. So we're told that the circle has a diameter of 62 centimeters or 0.62 meters. So the radius of the circle is 0.31 meters. So area is pi r squared. So pi times 0.31 squared gives an area of 0.3019 square meters. And so plugging that in, it allows us to find the electric field strength. The flux of 2.92 times 10 to the fifth Newton meter squared per coulomb equals the electric field times the area, 0 0.3019 square meters. And this gives an electric field strength of 967,207.685 newtons per coulomb. Again, this is a very basic problem, just kind of going over the idea of electric flux, that the electric flux is the electric field that passes through an area. The second problem that we're going to look at is a little bit different. It's still looking at the idea of electric flux, but it has an extra piece with it. So we have this square-based pyramid. The sides of the base are 8.07 meters each. And we have an electric field that's pointing straight up. And the electric field is 53.4 newtons per coulomb. And in this problem, we're trying to find the electric flux that's going out through the pyramid's four slanted surfaces. But the key idea in this problem is we're told that no charge is contained in the pyramid. The reason that this is important is because to solve this problem, we're going to be using Gauss's law. And Gauss's law tells us that the net electric flux through a surface equals the enclosed charge divided by epsilon zero. So in this problem, because no charge is contained in the pyramid, it tells us that the net electric flux must be zero. This tells us that every electric field line that points into the pyramid also comes back out of the pyramid. So to find the flux that's coming out through the four slanted surfaces, it's equivalent to finding the flux that's going in through the bottom of the pyramid. And so at first it looks like this problem is more complicated because we have the height of the pyramid, we might have to try and find an angle, but we don't need to do any of this if we recognize that the flux that's coming in through the base of the pyramid has to equal the flux that's coming out through the top of the pyramid, the four slanted sides on top. And so the flux that's passing through the base is the electric field times the area of the base. That electric field is perpendicular to the base of the pyramid. And so the electric flux is 53.4 newtons per coulomb times the area of the base, which is 8.07 meters squared. Because the electric field is coming in to the pyramid through the base, the flux that's through the base is going to be negative. And so the flux through the base is negative 3,477.669 newton meters squared per coulomb. So the flux out the top has to be the positive of this. The flux through the base plus the flux through the top have to add up to equal zero. So the flux through the top, the outward flux through the four slanted surfaces is positive 3,477.669 newton meter squared per coulomb. 
And so this problem shows a basic application of Gauss's law. If we know the enclosed charge is zero, we know that the total flux through the surface must be zero. So if we know the flux through the base, we also know the flux through the top because those two have to add up to equal zero. So even if we had some more complicated shape, that it was some curved shape on the top, it wouldn't matter as long as we can find the flux through the base of the pyramid, we would know the flux through that curved, complicated shape out through the top. In a later problem, we're going to look at an example where the electric flux is not zero. When you add up the flux through each of the surfaces, it does not add up to equal zero, and we're going to use that with Gauss's law to figure out how much net charge must have been enclosed by the surface. But looking at that problem is something that's going to be done in a separate video.